Hey everybody, Josh from Silka and Marginal Gains here once again with, uh, I guess, Chain Loop Wars, maybe for lack of a better term. Uh, you know, we've been doing this series now for a couple of weeks, uh, really using this ASTM G77 pin on ring test machine uh, to just look at the wear differences between uh, certain chain loops. Uh, and we've been asking you to make suggestions of which ones we should test. And of course, uh, the White Lightning product family has been mentioned now a bunch of times. And this one, I really want to go in a little bit more depth, even beyond uh, beyond just the lube testing to talk about. You know, I have been particularly harsh uh, on White Lightning as well as the company Finish Line. Um, and honestly, the, the real reason behind that is partly that these products are not very fast lubricants. Um, partly because they're high wear lubricants, right, which is a bad combination. But quite frankly, the reason I, I call them out specifically is that these products are what I would, I mean, the, the best way I could possibly say it is this is like an environmental hand grenade um, right here. I've got my light so you can kind of see the separation of the, of the material. You know, what we have here, it's only about 10% lubricant. Uh, and this is a mix of wax and PFAS chemicals, right? The forever chemicals that, um, you know, we're now trying to get banned in a lot of places for, you know, they're causing cancer, low birth weight, birth defects. Um, you know, they get into systems, particularly like aquatic systems, and they never go away. The forever chemicals, PFAS, if you want to Google it, we can put some links to the CDC below. They're amazing lubricants that were developed in like the 1950s and 60s. Um, largely around space program and, and some other things, and they've been used everywhere from Teflon pans to fast food wrappers, but we now know better. Um, and I just wish we could convince people to stop using them. So this is a forever chemical that's gonna pollute the environment and be around forever. And the carrier here um, is typically either heptane or pentane, and I have not analyzed the two different products to see which is primarily which. Um, both of these are extremely strong greenhouse gases that even more so than being worse than CO2 as greenhouse gases, uh, they bind up with other molecules in the atmosphere, um, causing all sorts of additional problems. Um, it's just bad stuff. I mean, you read the label right here, you know, extremely flammable, extremely harmful or fatal if swallowed, keep out of reach of children, read precautions on back, and then you've got all of the stuff. I mean... You know, it's toxic, it's environmentally toxic, maybe fatal if swallowed. I, I just I just struggle that we have a product that doesn't work very well uh, as the what it's supposed to do in the first place. It causes extremely quick and fast drivetrain wear, so it's costing you extra money, and it's environmentally irresponsible in my opinion. So, you know, people have said, Josh, you own a company that sells lubricant, you're calling out other lubricant companies, you're a jerk. That's fine. If you think I'm a jerk for that, don't buy my stuff. But for God's sake, don't buy this stuff. You know, go buy something from uh, Ceramic Speed. Makes a hell of a product that's environmentally uh, not so bad. NFS lubricants are uh, extremely good um, and, and contain none of this nonsense. So, you know, if you're not going to buy from Silka, go to NFS, go to Ceramic Speed, go to one of our, uh, our competitors that's being more environmentally responsible and, quite frankly, with products that work better. Um, so let's get to the thing. I mean, here, what do I mean these are not quick? Well, let's look at, uh, here's this graphic. Thank you, Michelle, for adding this. Um, showing, this is friction facts data, uh, showing the relative efficiencies of chain lube. And you see all the way over here on the right, you've got uh, these white lightning products. And they're somewhere in the seven to eight watts of loss uh, range. They're really in like the bottom quarter of, of all the lubricants tested at Friction Facts. Over here on the left, you see we've got um, the Silco lubricants, Synergetic, Synergy, Super Secret, uh, Hot Wax, the fastest product uh, really on the market right now. The thing to point out that over here on the left, a lot of these products, uh, Squirt, Smooth, uh, UFO Drip from Ceramic Speed, um, they are not environmentally toxic products. So again, if you think I'm a total ass for calling out these companies, uh, and you're not going to buy Silka stuff, that's fine. Just stop using this crap and, and buy from one of my other competitors who is at least making uh, some better decisions environmentally. And 
you're going to go faster. And if we look at the zero friction data, we'll put that up here. Thank you, Michelle. Um, you see the difference here. I mean, this, uh, you know, this product in particular, the first thousand miles of use, clean thousand miles of use in the test, 23% chain wear, 23%. So a quarter of the life of the chain is gone in a thousand clean miles of riding. Look at Synergetic, 0.0% wear in that same test. So you're gonna have 25% chain wear versus 0% chain wear. Again, even if you don't wanna buy from me, go to, you know, uh, Rock and Roll Gold has PFAS in it, but at least it doesn't contain quite as many bad chemicals. Um, I, I would pick NFS of the rest of that group. Um, you know, more like a, a 9, 10% wear uh, in that same thousand kilometers. So uh, that's what I mean by high friction and high wear. Now. Let's see it on the test machine, because I think you really do kind of have to see it to uh, believe it. The last thing I will point out here, you know, people say this stuff is, you know, it's cheap. It's like eight or nine dollars a bottle. The thing to remember is this is all of the chain lube that is in the bottle. OK, so the bottle is cheap, but this all evaporates off and starts destroying the, the earth pretty much immediately after you apply it. The only lubricant. Uh, in this bottle is there. So while this is technically a four ounce bottle, it's really less than an ounce of actual lubricant. Um, so I think we should just point that out as well. And you will see in the test um, sort of the effect of that, that it's just, it's, it's not very much of a lube. So here we go. I've got my pin. Um, here I can take a picture of the bear pin so we know our starting point. A uh, brand new pin. And just like in our last one, we will just rotate the pin so we can see the relative size of the wear patches. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, we're going to start with Clean Ride, and we are going to shake it. And I will say that is the one thing these lubes do well is they, they stay pretty clean. Because it's primarily a solvent, it goes right through the chain, it carries dirt out. It's basically pouring solvent on your chain. Um, the solvent carries dirt out, and then a little bit of lubricant residue is left behind. Uh, the chain dries on the outside because all of that pentane, heptane nonsense is flashing off into the environment. Um, and so it does stay clean. It just happens to also not really be lubricating while it's doing it. So let's uh, get this guy open. We've got it nice and shaken. We'll go ahead and whoa, drip it on. I mean, it's just, it's thinner than water in consistency. Um, and we will give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll, we'll just keep pouring it on through the test. Uh, let me get it spinning. So we'll pour it on through the test, uh, just so no one can say that we weren't in there. You can see it flinging. You can hear the friction. Um, here, we'll give it. We've, I've even run this test with this. Oh, shoot, we'll do it. Uh, well, we'll set our minute. We'll stop it at 30 seconds. I've even done this test with filling the little cup of the lubricant so that it's a constant bath of lubricant. Uh, just to see if even that, uh, something like that, might help. Uh, and the reality is it doesn't. So it has a terrible smell. Uh, that's, it's a chemical smell, right? All right, so let's go ahead and stop. We're at 38 seconds to go, but we, st we stopped a little bit late. What happens here that's interesting? Um, okay, <laughs> you can see the size of the patcher. You can also see steel left. These are magnets that hold the little cup. You can see steel shavings on that cup. Uh, here, let's go ahead and just get it under. Oh, shoot, I didn't wipe it. Get my microfiber cloth and get it wiped. Okay. There we go. I'll take a picture of that. That is about, oh gosh, that's probably a six to seven uh, millimeter wear scar, pretty significant wear scar. The, the upside for the test, as you hear, once there's enough surface area, really almost anything um, has enough surface tension to be a reasonable lubricant. Um, you know, at this, uh, at the loads we're running here, I mean, really, you know, this is slightly better, say, than water, um, but not by a whole lot. So that was Clean Ride, the uh, supposed clean version of this product. Okay, let me get my gear wiped. So here, you've seen it. That's six millimeters. All Michelle, oh, I'm eyeballing it. We will measure the pin after this video. Uh, Michelle will put the actual measurement up there. I'm always wrong about that, but I do want to shoot 
all these videos in one take uh, so you can see that there's no silly business going on. We're just kind of doing it all in real time. And um, I guess you guys saw in my last video with, with Pro Gold, uh, and we even get really surprised sometimes. I had not pre-tested that, and I think we ended up with a three millimeter wear scar, which was like way better than I expected. So um, yeah, okay, so there's our, our patch. Let me put that in my pocket. We'll go ahead and twist, uh, rotate our pin to the next spot. Let me get my... It's the one downside of these high wear lubricants is that they really require a lot of time grinding the ring back flat because they just do so much damage. Um, it's hard to get, get it back in. Okay, so everything is clean. Uh, let's put our cap back on and try to evaporate out as little of that crap as possible. We're gonna go with this one. This one's interesting, Epic Ride. It's a semi-dry film silicone technology, also in uh, some sort of toxic, fatal if swallowed, um, and highly flammable carrier um, that flashes off. Uh, but look at that, It's it, this is maybe, I would guess at most, one to two percent uh, lubricant in there. I mean, you're, you're really getting very little lubricant uh, in this bottle. Uh, again, primarily it's solvent. So let's get it nice and shaken up. Let's see what the consistency is when we drip it on. Ooh, it's got an interesting consistency. It's a little bit thicker than I would have thought. Um, okay, let's get it spinning. Let's get it nice and hosed down. You can see it. There we go. We'll just give them all the benefit of the doubt. We'll just keep hosing that on there. I can actually see, I'm gonna photo this, I can see the metal particles flinging into the... Oh yeah, we'll get that, that's an interesting... Uh... Ah, crap, and I forgot to set the timer again. You know what, it... Michelle put the time up there uh, since I forgot to hit the watch, but holy smokes, this one, this one is... What do they call it? Epic? Yeah, epic. It's epically bad. Um, whew. That. Wow, it's... Uh, you'll see here. It's a good sight worse. It's... Oof, I mean, that... That may be the first centimeter. That's, that's over a centimeter. Um it's probably twice the surface area of the other one. We will uh, we'll hit that with uh, measurement here in a second. We'll post it up. But that's that's a that's a pretty shocking result, not uh, and not in a good way. So, gonna really have to grind the ring on this one and clean up all of my metal particles and everything else. Thank God for Silka gear wipes. I know it's a shameless plug, but I mean they really work. And remember, uh, Silka gear wipes are not originally a Silka product. We actually bought the company that invented the gear wipe uh, because we liked the product so much. So, you know, I feel like that's when I, I talk about how much I like that product, but I, you know, also put my money where my mouth is and uh, physically purchased the company that made the thing. I liked it so much. So if you haven't used them, uh, I highly recommend uh, the Silka gear wipe. It's a solid product. All right, give me a minute to do this and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Um, a lot of work cleaning the, uh, grinding that pin back. Holy smokes, yeah, this, this one is not an all-time record, but certainly a, a record of the, in near term or near time. I, I just haven't had one quite that bad in a while. Anyway, um, okay, so we had Clean Ride, Epic Ride, between the two, Clean Ride clearly, clearly better uh, really by probably more than a factor of two. Again, we'll, we'll, Michelle put the actual number here so we can see how wrong I was. I'm going to say it's 2.2 times better. It's actually, there you go. I won't know. Um, Synergetic, 
So remember, I'm going to get it upside down, shake it, get that tungsten disulfide in there, um, and then we are going to apply and see the difference. So we've got my synergetic, a couple of drips up there, a couple of drips on here. Um, go ahead, I'm gonna get it, get it spinning. I'll do a couple more drips just to make sure we've got full coverage. You can hear it beginning to touch and listen for it. Oh, go ahead and start it and give it a full minute. You get that beautiful, it's probably what, one or two seconds of that screechy metal on metal and then you go straight to that uh, tribofilm sound, right? That's just the, uh, uh, the two metals essentially floating on a thin layer of that lubricant between uh, running between them. So it's just that very high film strength. Now, we talked about the zero friction data while this is running. You know, what does this durable tribofilm mean? Well, let's put the zero friction back up again. That's why you're getting that 0.0% in that first thousand clean kilometers of riding, right? So uh, section two here, where we do start to see where he is pouring sand uh, on that while it's being ridden. So that's a thousand miles of the thing being ridden with sand uh, applied uh, continually. Um, and so you start to see some wear because of course we can prevent metal on metal uh, wear in, in clean, but you start introducing a, you know, essentially a grinding compound. Um, timer's done, we'll keep talking because it's not gonna get any worse. Um, but you, you get that grinding compound thing happening um, and the, the lube can just only do so much to prevent that, so. Okay, lift it off. Ah, I forget to turn it off every time and I get that splatter. But again, I've got the Soka gear wipes. Okay, so we'll get it back down, and there we go. Whew, wow. Okay, we're back. We're, it's like our standard one millimeter, give or take. Oh, here, let me shoot my picture of it. Um, it's the standard one millimeter synergetic wear mark. So, so there you go. So I think hopefully that gives you guys an idea um, in, in the test lab, sort of some of what we are seeing. Um, on a test like this compared to a test in a chain like this one that Zero Friction does, um, you know, where we had a clean ride do 23% wear in 1,000K versus 0.0% wear in that first 1,000K. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't think I have anything else to say about this one other than please don't buy this stuff. Uh, if you have it in your house, um, which I think all of us do, I will tell you it don't throw it straight to the landfill where it's just going to pollute. Um, it works very well on door hinges and in uh, door latch mechanisms because it really penetrates well, the stuff flashes off, and then it leaves such a small amount of lubricant in there um, that it doesn't get gummy or sticky over time. So, you know, stop using it on your bicycle. Finish up what you got uh, on the doors and the, the hinges and things around the house. Um, and then consider an alternative. And if it's not mine, like I said, we'll give you the names. We will put, I will put links to my competitors' uh, lubricants right here below uh, that we recommend over this stuff. At least you're gonna run at lower friction, lower wear, and without the major environmental consequences. Um, so if you don't want my stuff, check out stuff from these other guys. Once again, everybody, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.